Okay, so a couple of announcements. Portrait Studio is still on sale. It will no longer be on sale um, uh, on the 1st of April. The last day of the sale is the 31st, so if you are interested in owning a copy, please take advantage of the price uh, that it is on right now. It will go back up um, to almost 50% higher. Uh, this is because of a massive update that's coming up. And after every major update, it comes with a sale to make sure that everyone can own it. And I do this so that everyone has a copy. Those who are having issues affording the current price, um, for the current price before the sale, um, might have an even harder time after the overhaul update. So please take advantage of that while you still can. Um, and uh, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that I do have a challenge up right now. I do have a challenge, not up right now, like not up, but there is one in the works. Uh, so you'll see a challenge for this for this um, month for for April. Hopefully, very very soon for April. As of April first, it'll go up. Um, just like a full on challenge that I'll uh, just describe for you guys in our next meetup. Um, so there won't be a poll. Just to let you guys know, there won't be a poll. I do apologize. I know that we wanted to have a little bit more of a uh, an involved way of you know developing this challenge um, theme. But uh, the less time I spend on a poll, the sooner you guys will have your challenge. And uh, for those interested in Patreon, um, if you are interested in April Patreon, you have to sign up now. You can't sign up after the 1st. After the 1st, you will have missed the registration window, um, which happens on the 1st. If you don't sign up on the 1st, you don't get anything that comes with all the uh, tiers that you sign up for. So if you are interested in, in Patreon, you signed up in March, hoping to get in on March rewards and March classes, March assignments, you have now missed it. You will get it uh, for April. Um, and they'll get the invite for the Discord as well, of course. You'll still be able to see some of the lessons we did, but all of the brushes that I distributed, all the major rewards of March are now gone. Uh, they're only open for a small window of time. Uh, but for those who are interested in joining as uh, apprentices, um, you, are, uh, you have this option. Uh, it's called kind of a good alternative to uh, private tutoring. We just did our lesson up today. I'll be posting on Facebook some of the homework from our apprentice tier on the Discord group, but we have had an amazing time having so much fun with thumbnails and telling stories, and um, I will describe the brief that I that I put out for the challenge uh, for the month of March, and uh, some of the homework that was submitted was so beautiful, the stories are so clean, um, really, really amazing stuff I saw today. Uh, so if you guys are interested, we host one major stream slash class slash hangout that lasts around two hours every single time. You guys discuss with me. We have a massive panel of, of, um, of members, and we just talk back and forth on the homework. I have a lesson, and then, of course, the homework is always related to the lesson, and you're more than um, uh, welcome to try homework from previous months as well. Um, if you're looking to just support, you do have uh, other tiers to support in and tiers that kind of meet halfway. Um, so all that is done and done. I think that's it. Let's get started on today's class. Um, so for this piece, uh, which is something I really, really wanted to look at, oh, come here. Um, we have a bit of an issue with silhouette. Uh, so when it comes to silhouette, students have way too much fun with a dodge tool. And something I really wanted to show you guys is on Fortress Studio, you have the option of having this active noise fog um, just happening in the background. And this would be the only explanation, so we're just going to watch and wait. This is one of the only explanations for why we have little explosions of light past the outline of the form. She is a dense, opaque form. She is not going to um, stand in the way of the light, but uh, or let the light light through like a translucent uh, or transparent um, object or, or, or transparent texture. What happens is that what's what's happening in the image right now is that the fog is what carries the bloom and disrupts the edge. But here, it doesn't really feel like there is a fog that's causing that. And if there was, it's just everywhere. And if there was a fog, um, it would show a little bit more of a dimness. The edges wouldn't be that sharp. It would be really, really dim. Just take a look at what happens to objects under the fog. Did you see that? That hand under the fog has lost all edges, has lost contrast. It's completely hidden by it. So this active fog, um, all thanks to Abu and his genius with um, 
developing this, uh, but uh, th this is just a wonderful way to really see how shadows behave in a silhouette in a foggy environment. They cast the shadow, the shadow is projected on, the shadow of her body is projected on the fog in front of her, which is what we're seeing, illuminated by the uh, point light that is behind her that we can see right there. This is the part of the scene here. Let me just move this over. Uh, this is the part of the... Um, actually, I'm not sure why the rotation is like that. So I'm going to just correct the rotation to be a little bit more symmetrical, just like that, and then move this back. <clears throat> so it's a perfect silhouette behind her. And we can just see a bit more of a projection of her cast shadow as the fog moves. This is just a beautiful example of one of the times where we do have a cast shadow um, in the way, a cast shadow uh, of the silhouette on the fog nearby, and in only only situations really where we have this amazing amount of bloom, kind of not really bloom, it's just fog that's illuminated in front of the object. What you did here, if it wasn't, if it didn't have any of that, kind of like that, that, um, a uh, foggy effect. It would be just a simple edge, just like that, just like we see here, a simple clean edge of a silhouette. Nothing extreme. This rim light we're seeing isn't actually a rim light. It's just the illuminated half of the arm that if I were to rotate in the, just the exact spot would look like a line of light, which it's not. So this, remember, is not uh, some kind of subsurface scattering rim light. It's just the camera, camera, angle, in, camera, camera angle in such a way that we don't see um, all of the side of the cube that's illuminated, um, just the side that's slightly showing enough to behave like a rim light, which it's not. It's just because of the camera angle. Rim lights don't just happen by nature. Or they're naturally occurring or something like that. The subsurface scattering, yes, they do. If this was a furry texture um, and the light was in front of it, there would be some light behind it, and it was in front of the light, there would be some light kind of illuminating it in the distance. <clears throat> um, and then you'd have a subsurface scattering rim surrounding the little ball of fur. Uh, but that's not the case here. That's not what happened. This is all skin. It's all opaque, and it's really washy, washed out, cheesy looking, excessive light. I can't believe Dodge Tool is this amazing, kind of. This is the kind of lighting I refer to as immature. Um, it's just excessive, and it's a sign that you're just having a little too much fun um, with your Dodge Tool. So I'm just going to... And your, and your soft brush. Two really, really evil tools. The, the number one way to cheese is dodge tool and soft brush. Remember that. They are just the number way, number one way to get cheese in your work. So this lasso was worth it. Um, it really did bring out uh, a lot of her form. It didn't allow us to kind of uh, work with that bloom, and I kind of chose the best color. So this lasso was just really, really good for the point I'm trying to make. Also, another really, really massive change here is that in the Portrait Studio version, we kept the light weak towards the bottom. Uh, so we kept the light towards the lower half. So the middle line, it's lower than. Hers seems to be just like stretching all the way. Um, and that doesn't really, that's again, another cheesy over overuse of your, you know, your, your light. So but just be careful when you're doing that because you, you really don't need that much light to make a point. And that's something we covered today in my um, my class on Patreon. I actually just can open up the, the, the notes for you. Um, one of the biggest things is that light is less naturally occurring than shadow. Shadow is more, occurs more. Um, there's more space that, it, that darkness occupies than light. So light is always somehow weak. So it's always somehow weak. It's always somehow not strong enough. Um, so when we weaken the light, we actually provide more intrigue. Uh, so just take a look at what happened by dimming something, something else happened. How does that work? We limit the light, but we have more. Aren't we supposed to have less? That's how a student thinks, and that's how a student ends up falling into this horrible, horrible trap of really, really cheesy light, light use and dodge use and soft brush use. They think that it's all about the characterization of the light, but remember that light is at its best when it is in a weak state, when it is in a dim state, because that's when the most beautiful shadow play happens. Uh, so um, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. A soft brush and dodge tool are always ways to add cheese to your painting. <laughs> 
Yes, it's like some nice nacho cheese. You're just pouring it all over your painting. To weaken the light source is to enhance it. It's to enhance its behavior. So some areas where we can have a little bit of a bloom is just around here. So that bloom happened just there. She is opaque. Um, we are seeing, I think her hips are a little bit awkward. It feels like a forced thigh gap. Um, it doesn't really feel natural. And there's no, like, hip structure. It seems like it's a kind of like a, a, I'm really not sure how to describe this. There's just no hip. There's no indentation. Um, there's no real shape or, like, recognizable shape to the thighs. They feel very, like, basic shaped. Um, this also feels like a really, really forced thigh gap in the fact that there's no little bump in the thighs where the fat is and the muscle is and we're just trying to give it some kind of familiarity here in the muscle structure. Um, she seems very bony and kind of lanky so I would kind of give her more of, of an indication of the bones here. Give the thighs a bit more strength. And um, kind of just try to do something like that. See before it kind of looked not even like thighs, it just looked like too basic a shape. <clears throat> Yes, it has been just a really, this has been a really bad month. It's the, 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 the whole year starts off with a strike, and and then I have to deal with that dog situation, and then, ah, oh, it was just the worst. It's like, every time I see a Shiba now, I just get so mad and so sad, because I had one in my house, a little puppy I was holding, and every time she shook her fur, I just had an asthma attack. It was so upsetting, and the, I found out it was sick, and I ask for you guys to <laughs> rate the place I got it from and oh, it was just so terrible it was just a terrible it's been it's been really tough but hopefully this is the end I had the first rain today in our year um, so that's nice sign of spring but yeah I, I don't know how I'm keeping it together but I think I'm going crazy I really think I'm going crazy all right, so let's take a look at the before and after. I still think it's a bit too cheesy. She's way too much in the shadow. As you can see, I turned on the, um, the, the, the camera light just a little bit so that we can see her. So we are seeing like light from an angle. But I'm going to turn off the camera light and turn on the directional light um, and just kind of aim it um, from a different angle. Uh, so just like aim it like that. And give it a little bit more strength. So she is in a silhouette, but she's got some light on her. Um, and that's kind of like a good way to reveal some of this girl. But it feels like you only have a silhouette. But at least now it's a more pronounced silhouette. It's more of a, of a you know, a little bit more, a little bit more dim, a little bit more intriguing. But this is just one half of the story. That excessive bloom was really destroying the silhouette's behavior. We weren't sure if that was fog or if it was the... The fact that she's transparent or subsurface scattering. This is nice, the subsurface scattering in her cloth and her headdress, that's good. But I'm not sure why you forced it around her thighs, which were very circular and non-human. They didn't have any real human um, indication to them. Um, also, I really think you need to weaken uh, the, 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 you know, whatever it is, this break in the rocks behind her that's causing the light to come through this almost like revelation scene. I really think you need to dim and just choose a specific path that the light is traveling in and just throw off some of those little points where the light kind of just shines through and creates more of a spotlight when it's interrupted, something like that. Um, Something like this. No, that makes no sense. Just something a little bit more like that. <clears throat> and just uh, showing where the light is coming through her hands. And then looking at the before and after. And now if you want to, if you really have to, um, you can go ahead and dodge um, the uh, the areas where are directly behind her so they can become quote-unquote hotter so if, if you heat those areas up you won't be able to you know you'll be able to describe why the light is so strong but before and after now you have a better bed of silhouette on which you can dress the directional light 
um, which you actually need to include. So you need to go in there and decide where the light in the cave is coming from because there's always a light, whether or not there is one for the sake of the camera so they're visible while we're filming them, there is a light. Um, and we have to remember to include that. Um, so, is she wearing baby legs on her head? Baby legs? Um, baby legs. <clears throat> no, I can't. <laughs> Stop, guys. Um, so, uh, uh, something about her reminds me of the Enchantress from Suicide Squad. Probably the dancing, that dancing. Um, uh, any questions at all about the silhouette? Any questions about this scene? Um, any questions at all? We'll move on to the next one. I'll keep this open in case there's a relevant question. <clears throat> Next up would be uh, this character, this drawing here. So this character is illuminated somehow by a really, really strong small light here, but the small light isn't bright enough to be the light illuminating his face. It has to be that bright in order for it to work. Um, what needs to happen is the background value needs to brighten up. Okay, it can be bright, but it can't be so, like, don't worry, because it's not going to be so bright that it's not going to allow the little pixie to, to be bright. But it's going to um, be bright enough that it'll explain what's happening to his face, but at the same time, it will kind of be its own light type deal. Okay, so I think I've captured that for the most part. All right, I'm going to illuminate the background. Darken the character, because it'll explain why he's so visible. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just darken him a bit. I'm just going to try to play in between the two. So now the, the character in his palm gets to be a little bright, but he's still silhouetted against the background. So he is um, still kind of technically doing his own thing in his environment. And then I'm going to just, again, select inverse. Go here and then dim him some more. All these curls on his head, all this stuff needs to be weakened substantially so that this little pixie light makes more sense. This thumb is in a silhouette. What is illuminating this thumb? If there was a little, if there was a really, really strong light, then we can go ahead and give it that strength that it needs. And then I'll select all of this and go back to the previous layer and then delete away. But now there's a room outside of him. That room is not part of the light the pixie is causing because if this was night and the pixie was doing its own little thing and um, it wasn't like the pixie was light, it was illuminated and there was a nighttime scene around it, that pixie would not be strong enough to illuminate the, um, the environment. What the fuck is going on? Seriously. Um, I really have no idea what's going on right now <laughs> with my with my little panel. I'm sorry, I have no idea what I just did. Uh, so I'm going to just select this, go back. So before, do you see what I mean with the black light? It's not, it should not be the only light in the area. If it was, we wouldn't see any part of his face. We'd see just maybe the tip of his nose and some glimmer in his eyes. So we have to explain why we're seeing so much of him. So by giving them a bright background, we can show that he is being illuminated somehow. Do you see how suddenly there's space behind him? Blackness is no space, really. It's just blackness. It, it's just, if it's flat, it's flat. Black and white can be very flat. White can be even more flat than black. Um, uh, but when we brighten the background and darken him, uh, we now have created a room, and this makes a little bit more sense. And you can, you know, give him the silhouette on his thumb. You can illuminate as much as you need to, and it won't be, uh, 
it won't be like a complete disruption of the story you were going for. It's still the same little story. Okay, so it's not, it doesn't hurt to bring in some of the light environment in the room and the, and the world outside the painting. It's not uh, detrimental to your story. Um, so some of the things that you can do is grab this color, put it into the eyes. The way you drew the face is a little bit off. I'm not sure what you were doing with the, with the portrait exactly. He has very curly, pretty boy hair, but he's got a very, very large nose, very small eyes. Is he a giant? Is he an ogre? Um, what exactly are you going for? The lips, the mouth is actually facing, so this lower lip should be, the upper lip should be darker. The lower lip should be lighter, um, just like this, because the light is angled away. This is the light that's revealing his face, after all. Okay, yes, um, how to show fog engulfing her, or some part of her body parts, for example, like in front of her silhouette. Well, that's what we saw in Portrait Studio. It would kind of just completely go in front. So let's take a look. It completely goes in front and just fogs it up, it just dims it. So when it goes directly in front, it's illuminated by the light and that little space in between her arms, because you see the shadow is magnified, it's projected. You see how the shadow is way out here? This is her arm shadow because this is the fog way in front of her. See that arm shadow and the light shines in front? So you just think about the fog and how the light can shine through her arm, um, illuminating some of her body. Right, so the light is here. There is a shadow up there. I really recommend you look up a reference. You do not have the right kind of description right now. He looks like his eye has been punched. It does not look like it's squinting and is, you know, an expression. Um, it does not look accurate anatomically. You really should go and look up a reference for a side view. I feel like you pretty much guessed your way through the side view. It does not look grounded with any realistic rendition of anatomy. Um, the, the, the sphere of the eye is gone. The, the expression is forced in the eyebrow. Uh, so please look up a reference. But start off with this little environment. It's really going to enhance the light. Again, by, by illuminating the light in the background, we weaken the light by making it part of an environment. Um, uh, by making it the secondary light source in a large environment. Uh, for this piece, <clears throat> the framing is off. It's weird. I don't know why you chose a vertical canvas. It's not really a long canvas for a book cover. It's the most awkward canvas you can choose. It's not long enough to provide a believable story space uh, for an environment. It's not a book cover in the fact that it's not long enough. And you are throwing a character off into the edge of the canvas where there are frames. Just like here, the character is right on the frame. This is a big red no. Um, just like that. Uh, we, we, we can't, we have to push this character over here somewhere. We have to lengthen the canvas a little bit more. You have to invest a little bit more into this, into these two eyes than, than the two dots. You have to, you have to add a little bit more than this. You've added for the, you've gone for the full detail and you gave us two kind of like Mario eyes. You can't do that. That's the confusion of style and the confusion of the world, the world that you have. Um, so if, if the world that you have is aimed for, towards children, if it was aimed towards children, you should have gone for a different design in the fairy, something a little bit closer to the anatomy here. Bulky, thick, shapes, space, uh, sorry, shape-oriented and distributed with space in between them, triangles, simple shapes in the design of the character. You don't go for full anatomy like you did here with longer bodies. That's its own style. Um, so be, be, very, be very careful with that. Um, if The more realistic you make the humanoid, the more realistic everything else has to be. Um, you can't really uh, uh, you know, mix different styles from completely different worlds together in the same image. So start off with deciding whether or not you want it to be a long canvas or, or, or a short, I mean, or a vertical canvas. It can't be a short canvas um, like this. It feels very stunted. There's not much going on other than these two and the fairy. I'm not sure what the story is. The story is very indirect. 
there's nothing really going on is she offering it food if it's food why does everything at every junction have to be interpreted magically why can't one thing be perfectly straight why can't it just be a simple offering of food and a food like item why does the food itself have to glow why does the person offering the food have to be magical? Why does the person receiving the food have to be magical? Why do they have to be in such an awkward positioning in these different little mini game type of setups and platforms? Why does everything have to be magical in every junction? The more complicated your original story, the more um, complicated your depiction of it will be, which is why it's difficult to access this. It's beautiful. Something about it just makes me want to keep staring at it. But something is also causing me to reject the story which is your presentation and your composition is not decided. Your objects, um, we don't really know what the focal point is. The story is completely, I'm just completely missing the story here. And um, it's not cohesive, it, it makes no sense. And the light environment is really, really dark. The light is limited, but her, her, her wings are glowing on their own, yet there's no bloom to assign them as a light source. There's no reflection of the wings on her hair. Her design itself is also very unusual, very weird-like. Um, the kind of like alien. So there's not one thing familiar in here that we can hold on to as the viewers. Everything has been forced into obscurity on purpose to make it seem more unique a drawing. Remember that simplicity goes a long way. Um, so what you're doing here is a little bit of everything. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not asking for people to write stuff back to me. <laughs> yeah, write your own notes. I, I will, I will ask you. Don't worry guys, I'll ask you to write something back to me. Um, any questions at all? Um, not, when I say room, I don't mean a closed room. When I say room, I mean the outside, inside, anywhere. I just say the room that they're in, the world, the whole earth can be a room if we're talking about a universal light source. A room meaning there's space. That's all I mean. Room as in space, make some room, make some space, is what I'm saying. Um, a black background is never a good idea. A black background is just that, that's just it. A black, boring ass background because it's just going to be flat, boring, desaturated. Compared to all the color, black is really boring. You never want full black beside a bunch of color. You want a saturated dark. Write that back to me. <laughs> um, so if you have a blue scene, um, so this is something that this, this person did right. The blackest black they have is not actually black. It's almost, maybe this is the darker. It's just a blue. Um, it's not all the way down here, which can look extremely gross and extremely desaturated. Just take a look at what black does. So what you want to say is you want a darker scene, but you want it to be saturated. In order to be saturated, the value has to go up instantly. So then you end up having a little bit more of that as the dark value. Okay, you don't want, that's a bit too saturated, but you don't want black ever. It's like a glowing worm inside of the mushroom. That is cute, yeah. It's hard to tell, really. I didn't understand that at all. Um, I, I didn't see that at all. It's really hard to tell. That's not dark enough. Also, I didn't see that it was a mushroom until I read the description. Oh, I see. It was hard to tell the top. That's because in this case as well, the background needs to be just a little bit lighter. If this is glowing in a sea of mushrooms glowing into the distance in a closed cave, and these mushrooms are sacred to the people of the elves, of course they are, and so they would feed them something, you know, that would make them glow. And so the glow continues. Let's just say that's the story. Um, this would be a massive bed of glowing little lights. Together, they would make the room pretty bright. Um, so, that, so this is something that you can do right now to salvage some of the, the, the reed that's off. Also push that guy in the distance back in. But you can brighten the background a little bit with the blue color that, that's coming off of them to kind of enhance the scene and create some silhouettes. Um, any more questions? I think today's class is actually going to be pretty short. I got through everything pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, I'm just like I, I'm just, I don't know what I'm running on, but I'm running on some stuff, like sugar or something. <clears throat> Undertale. Yeah. Are the tangents a bit off? Um, what do you mean by tangents? Where do you see some tangents? <clears throat> And so, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure there are many. Is 
isn't a humanoid and a mushroom enough to relate to said viewer? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, putting a thing beside a thing isn't the way to create relation. It's about telling a story, a, a relationship between the thing and the thing. So she's offering something. He, being adorable, is receiving something. But I'm forced to not to accept that that thing that she's offering is just something glittering. Why can't it be something familiar? So she's unfamiliar to me. He's completely unfamiliar to me. I've never seen a character design like this before. Kind of feels like a Mario character, but realized in, a, in an illustration. Um, but the thing she could have offered him, this relationship in this case, could have been something familiar. She could have offered him anything. I don't know. I'm not the writer. I, I, like I said, a piece of food or, or, or a flower or something like that would have been a little bit easier for me to understand than uh, some glitter. Because then you need to tell a story. But what's the story? Are there not more fairies in the distance also feeding? Are they, do they have a job in feeding these characters? Um, what's the story exactly? So the story is weak, the composition is weak because the framing was weak. You did not have the right kind of canvas shape. Um, and their story was weak in the fact that you did, it did not, was not there. The story was, there is no story basically is what I'm saying, and the story was not there to guide the eyes um, towards understanding the, char the character's relationship with each other. Could the composition be corrected with some cropping? If it's a um, book cover, we can do something like this. Um, and then we can have some more fairies and a little window over here to show the entrance of the cave. If it's um, a, an illustration of a environment we could have done something oops shit a little bit more like this to kind of fill in the scene complete this guy complete this guy have another guy in the distance also being fed um, wall opening or something for the cave over here some more little stalagmites stalactites and stalagmites on the ground um, just more busy fairy life and a big glowing orb of light coming off the little mushrooms all populated together at the base of the cave. Um, that would have been a good way to salvage. But I don't recommend keeping this at all if you want a real response from your audience. These are the requirements for completing this kind of setup. <clears throat> what on earth is that? Close tab group. <clears throat> uh, how to improve composition in general? Well, everything I just said. Um, the, the, the position of the horizon line, uh, what's the story? Um, all of that will help you decide on the mood and atmosphere of the painting. Um, looks flat to the pencil, we have a perspective. Uh, yes, the mushroom base isn't as round as the glow around it. Um, uh, so making the mushroom stalk seem flattened. Absolutely. So what Tom is talking about is... Um, is this right here. So we're seeing the top of the cylinder of the little rock formation, this little plateau, but we're not seeing the shape of the mushroom on top of it, which we should be able to see. It's kind of flattened. But honestly, I'm not even sure what the anatomy is of this creature. Um, I'm not sure what it is exactly um, that uh, it has all of this in it. Uh, the cropping tool in Photoshop shows wonderful lines to find the point of interest. That's a tip. Yeah, the same lines in a camera viewer. Absolutely, I agree, Honing Ball. Um, so, right here shows you a good idea of how to crop. So that this point of interest is here, the point of interest is there. She's somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't let her be completely in the middle. I would just set him up on a crosshair here. Him on two crosshairs between her and another. Um, and she just seems to be fitting in. But I would make the camera a little bit longer. The only time we have illustrations where the camera isn't horizontal and it's not deliberately, it's, it's in a book cover. That's the only time we have it. A book cover is the only time where we have these kinds of um, instances. Uh, so uh, you need to make sure you decide what you're doing this for, what kind of audience, what role this painting will play in your portfolio. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, please remember that the Portrait Studio 
uh, sale will end on the 31st if you are interested in that. By the 1st or the 2nd, depending on whether or not I'm using these days to compile the Patreon lesson plan, I might have time to complete the, 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 the resource pack for you guys for our next challenge. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you want a little hint on what it is, it's basically a boss fight. Um, and it will be between a uh, character of your choosing that you have to design. Uh, minimal designing, of course, there's a mood board, there's all kinds of stuff required. Uh, but uh, yes, it will be a boss fight, it will be a complete horizontal canvas, it'll be a full-on illustration, fully rendered, full color, and basically it's the scene when the boss finally gets into his final form, the realization of the boss. Boss fight, final, final fight kind of action scene. Um, it doesn't have to be fighting, but can it be a stare down, um, a boss stare down, final boss, final form, think like that. Um, I will probably decide on time of day. I will decide on weather. I will be tele-describing a very specific scene. I'm not going to put it up for interpretation, so it's very minimally, you know, voted on. There's no poll. There's no interpretation. It's a very specific scene that I require you guys to render. It's not really book cover. It's not really character design. It's nothing we've really seen before. Um, it's not only about character. It's about environment plus two characters and showing action, so showing tension. Um, so not really a hint I've just pretty much told it for you guys uh, but I don't want I don't want you guys to wait I will be posting it around the first uh, between the first and the fifth depending on when I'm going to be finished compiling patreon stuff um, I've been really really busy I just want this month to end because uh, of all the stress that's been happening um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this next challenge um, you'll probably have a month to do it a month or a month and a half um, usually April and May are my vacation months last year I took a two-week vacation or a three-week um, uh, so uh, I might take another one this uh, year, uh, late April, early May, so it just depends. I might do the class before or after, probably after, um, just so that we can uh, have, have all the time that I can, I can give you guys as much time as I, as I can for you guys to complete your full illustration. So I uh, can't wait to see what you guys post. It's really going to be fun. My voice is gone. I will see you guys on Thursday the 29th. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye.